Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Kengen Omega Chapter 93. So, to say this chapter is surprising would be a massive understatement. I'd say this is probably the most shocked, the most awestruck I have been by just about any chapter of Kengen Omega in a while. I think I'm more shocked than I was with the Nidon being a worm reveal. It's that crazy. So, there are three things I have to talk about in regards to this chapter specifically. Three pretty big important things. Um, and then some other stuff I'm going to talk about at the end of the video. So, for starters, at the end of the last chapter, we saw Lutian undergo some sort of transformation that probably Sayaka uh, said was the Kurei clan's removal. Now, me having assumed that removal is exclusive to the Kurei clan because of their genes. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's got to be the advance. You can't just learn removal, right? Right? Well, it seems from mostly Nico's heir. Nico, Nico's heirs... This is so weird having multiple possessives in one name. Nico's heirs video talking about Lutian from over the weekend. He talked about various theories about what the fuck Lutian was doing at the end of last chapter. Um, and I had totally forgotten that Ario was pissed at Ryan during the Annihilation Tournament for using removal. And it seems like that was because there is a possibility of people figuring out how to use removal. Um, so it's not so much that they can only do the removal because of their genes... It's that their, you know, physiology and their genetics allows them to use the removal without um, collapsing, like just imploding. Um, because the limiters on your body strength are there for a reason. It's so you don't accidentally kill yourself with your own strength. So that would happen to most people that aren't Kurei clan members trying to use removal. But I guess other strong people that could use it would figure out how to use it. So, yeah. Um, but this is not exactly removal. I mean, it's removal, but it's removal by a different name. It's called Demon Soul, which is a pretty fucking awesome name, actually. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm very easily pleased. If you put Demon and Soul in the name for abilities, it's very likely that I'll think it's a cool name. And this is basically the Wu Clan's version of the removal technique. And we learn about this from Wu Xin, who I can't tell if they're a very feminine man with huge bara titties or just a woman with short hair. Um, the anime... Schindler's... Wait, no, not Schindler's. Oh, fuck. This was about to get really weird. It's, um... Schrodinger's anime character. Is it a man? Is it a very... Is it a man with huge pecs or is it a woman? We will never know. I mean, maybe we'll learn at some point. Maybe if we get a dust cover, we'll find out. Um, and there, they, Wu Xin, who is hanging out with Ario, explains that, oh, this must be because we have a traitor in the Wu clan. So, interestingly, it turns out that there isn't actually a big rivalry between the Wu clan and the Kurei clan. If there is, it's probably just a friendly rivalry, because they're actually on fairly good terms. It's just Eddie who's going off and doing his own thing. And apparently, I guess he probably doesn't have a very good relationship with the rest of the Wu clan now if he went and taught their fucking secret technique to some random asshole. Not a super random asshole. It is the prodigy student of one of the Nikos, but someone who's not a member of the clan. So they're probably not too happy with him. Though, based on how fucking swole Eddie is. Eddie has big, you know, aura vibes. I don't know if you've ever seen aura coming off of Eddie, but he's like, he's as buff as Lalong is in some panels, um, which we haven't seen for really any member of the Kurei clan or Wu clan. So Eddie is one of those characters, whereas he's like a side character that we don't really see fight, but we're like, they're probably karaoke level. You know, Gaomukaku, both of the Nikos, and now Edward Wu. We're like, yeah, those guys are probably top tier. Um, so he was contracted by 
Tiger Nico to train Demon Soul to all of his students who are learning the Formula style, which is pretty fucking crazy. Um, Edward himself is like, yeah, you know, uh, most of these people will probably fucking die if they try to use Demon Soul. Uh, but Tiger Nico's like, nah, don't worry, it's whatever. And also, Lutian is like a one in a million genius, so he'll probably be fine. Um, so I guess that's pretty neat. Um, I assume, I will, first of all, we have the revelation that um, Edward was in contact with Tiger Nico, who it's really unclear if he's still alive. Um, I mean, obviously this takes place much farther into the past, but it seems to be after Regio's flashback, because he's got his longer hair, like when he fought against Oma's Nico, so it's really not clear when exactly this takes place, and whether or not the guy is still alive, because I'm pretty sure Oma's Nico said that he killed Tiger Nico, and while not definite, because we never actually saw him kill him, so there's still like sort of the possibility available there. Um, it's still also possible that he's still... It, it's not... It's, it's a 50-50, really. He could be dead. He could not be not dead. I don't know. Um, which way... It really makes me wonder. Like, this whole thing about Tiger Nico abandoning the Nico style because he thought it was a dead end. You couldn't go any further. Um, which I guess is true because I think... We saw with Oma what basically happens when you reach the pinnacle of the Nico style. It can only go so far. Um, and then you have other stuff that Tiger Nico developed, like the Advanced and Fallen Demon, um, where you're sort of like modifying the human body. Well, you're not modifying it, but you're like unlocking shit within the human body. You're not just doing martial arts anymore. Um, so he's been moving on from that. And is moving on to stuff like Formless, and now he's having people learn to do Demon Soul. Um, I'm wondering if this will play into the Worms thing about the cyber brain and shit. Um, very curious about that. So, back into the fight between Lutian and Guido. We see more of them fighting. Lutian has, as I predicted would happen, basically abandoned the use of the Formless style. Um, and is just sort of going back to a brute strength approach. He gets hit three times by Agito in what is very obviously Gathering Cloud's triple strike. He doesn't hit the three critical points on the face, I don't think. It doesn't look like it. It looks like he hit him on, like, the chest and shit. Um, so it's not exactly like triple strike, but... It's, it's very, very reminiscent of it. So that seems to be another example of Agito taking a move from one of the people he fought in the Annihilation Tournament and using it against his future opponents. And yeah, I just checked. He didn't hit him in the face. He hit him in, like, the middle of the chest, the top of the chest, and then in the chin. Um, so very similar to Triple Strike, but not exactly the same. Um, at this point, we get the reveal that Lutian is able to basically do 96% removal, which is fucking ridiculous. Like, that's so fucking stupidly high for someone who's not even a member of the Kurai clan. Like, that's nuts. If, listen, if you weren't agreeing with me in the past couple of weeks that Lutian is a solid S tier, you fucking better be now with 96% removal. Um... Unless you're one of those guys that don't think Ryan is also S tier. Like, what the fuck? What are you on right now? Um, so he goes monkey mode. He goes monkey mode harder than Yumigahama. Uh, you know, double hammer fist smashing up the arena. Um, and I have to say that his, his strength feats are pretty nuts. Uh, I think um, Kazuo says that he's putting out more strength than Julius, which is... What the fuck? Like, that's a really fucking insane. If that's what he means by that. Um, that's, that's pretty fucking crazy. Um, maybe he means for, like, someone of his size. Because, I mean, obviously, Lutian is way smaller than Julius. Julius is massive. Absolutely massive lad. I think prior to Toa, Julius was... No, I think is... is um, what the hell is his name? Haruo? 
is he bigger than Julius? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, like that's I, that's probably what he means. Like for someone of his basically weight class uh, and height to be doing that much strength output is kind of absurd. Um, but then what happens? We get exactly what I figured was going to happen to end the fight. We have a Guido using Dragon Shot. Not just any Dragon Shot. He, he looks like he's going to do an uppercut, he feints it, and then basically does a one-inch uppercut with the Dragon Shot, which is pretty fucking awesome. We get one page of art that just takes me back. I think I have mentioned before that I think... Have I? A lot of the art does not really feel as dynamic, and it doesn't really have as much... It's like missing something. If you go back and you look, you compare Omega and Ashura, the art style has very clearly improved, but it feels like there's something in the movement that's not there anymore. Is it the blur? I don't know. It's something. Something that is not present anymore. But they fucking have it in this page right here where he does this uppercut on Lu Tian. It's pretty... It's pretty fucking studly. Um, so, Lu Tian, or not Lu Tian, Agito gets basically the first double page spread of the Purgatory Tournament. I think this is the first double page. I know it's not technically a double page spread, it's like a page and a half spread, but it's like two pages that you put together and you get the complete image out of it. So, of course, Agito, the Emperor of the Kangen matches, is the first person to get very special paneling treatment like this. So good for Agito. It was a very solid finish, and as, like, 99% of us suspected, Agito does indeed win his match. Though very surprisingly, he won it as quickly as he did. I expected this fight to go on for another few chapters, because I thought we were going to get flashbacks of what Agito was doing in, like, America. And I'm kind of let down that I didn't get to see that. I was really, really hoping that we would get to see what Agito was up to. Because I feel like the most interesting thing about Agito by the end of the Annihilation Tournament is that he's basically someone that's trying to reconnect with his humanity. And we didn't really get to see any of that. So, since we're very obviously going to be doing stuff after this tournament in Omega, I'm hoping we get to see more of that then. This is my biggest problem with these Purgatory fights, is that it's not really so much about the characters, it's just more about who wins. Um, a lot of Ashura fights did emotion, uh, like, tying in emotion and the backstories into the fights way better than a lot of these Omega fights are. Um, so, that's that's still why Falcon vs. Rohito is the best fight of this tournament, even though a lot of people were really, really salty about um, that ending, which I understand. I still wish Rohito won, but it's fine. It's whatever. It's still a good fight. Um, so, I'd say this is probably the middle ground of the tournament, I'd say it's not as good as Ryuki versus Nidon, but it's better than uh, rounds one, three, and four. Um, so, good fight. Probably the worst of the Agito fights. I feel like a lot of the hits really didn't have a lot of impact to them. And good lord, was Lu Tien giving off jobber flags, like, from the start. Oh, Kano Agito, you're nothing to me. I inherited everything from Takeda Nico. And then just going on and on and on about that shit for the entire fight. And it's just like, dude, you are not gonna back that shit up. Like, Lutian. Lutian is very clearly an S tier fighter. But he's here to get beaten by Agito so we can see how strong Agito's gotten. I think that's another issue. Is you've had a lot of these fights. They're basically here to show off how strong the Kengen fighters have gotten. Um, which is why, like, with the first two rounds, I feel like the ending of the first round was kind of underwhelming because Gao Lang straight up beat Carlos. But he lost. But, like, Carlos jobbed really hard. He had Capoeira, which is a really fucking awful matchup for Muay Thai. Um, like... What, like, Jesus, like, he, he only pulled out Muay Thai for, like, the very end and just kicked Carlos, like, three times. And that was all it took. Three Muay Thai kicks, and that was all it took for Gao Lang to beat the ever-loving shit out of Carlos. Um, 
round two was good because you had like a very solid back and forth. Like the first half of the fight was Falcon beating the shit out of Rihito. You had like actual tension there, um, which was which was a lot better. Um, Julius Julius got like knocked out for a bit in round three, so I'll give I'll give Toa some props with that. He did manage to knock Julius out for like a few seconds. Um, but he did the whole I'll surpass God thing and then got one-shotted, basically. Um, Yumi, all shit-talking, and then he got his face caved in. Naidon. Naidon was fucking stomping Ryuki and only won because he chose to kill himself. Honestly, I kind of wish that that fight ended differently just so we could have a more, like, narratively satisfying ending. Because Nidon was very, very clearly holding back for, like, almost all of the fight. Like, he wasn't really putting much effort into anything. He could have fucking annihilated Ryuki. Oh my god. Like, he was, he was throwing him around like a fucking prostitute for several chapters. Um, so, yeah. I kind of wish we got to see Nidon getting a little more serious. And, I, like, I know you had to do the plot thing with the worm, but I kind of wish it was different. And with this, I feel like... This would be better if Lu Tian didn't go into Formless until at least two chapters in. We should have seen more of the Wu Wang Fist. We should have had more of Stoic Lu Tian because, like, these wacky, uh, crazy grin characters, uh, we, we have a lot of them. Like, Nidon got on it. Um, Kano did it in the past. Akoya's had a little bit of it. We've had Masaki do it. Um, not this Masaki, but Megara. Megara did it. Um, we have quite a few of these characters. We didn't really need another one. I get that we were doing the, the, the formless versus formless thing, but I kind of wish that Lutian had more of like a unique personality for a bit and then went into formless. I think it would have been much better if they did it that way. Now, the last big thing to talk about in this chapter specifically is the return of the the schizo himself. Not not this schizo, but like the um how, how do I hmm the uh the psychosexual schizophrenic Kiryu Setsuna is fucking back, baby. He's gotten a haircut. He looks cool. I like it. He's got he's got a pretty stylish outfit going on. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but long hair does not look as good on guys as it does in anime. Um, so, it's probably good that he cut his hair, but he looks, he's looking a little good. Um, now this is interesting because Kiryu pretty much lost his shit. Oh, saying that Kiryu was losing his shit at the end of Asher is probably a little bit of an understatement. Like, he was losing his fucking mind. He, like, he, his mind was gone. He was fucking insane. But now, he's wearing a collared shirt, he's got a nice haircut, he's having a peaceful conversation with Ryuki. Um, I'm wondering what's going on. Now, I feel like the most realistic theory I can think of right off the top of my head is something involving Matsudo and or the Kurei clan. So... There was another character that was losing his mind at one point, and then got uh, therapied back into shape, became a semi-functional human being, and that's the recent victor of this match, Ken Wagito. So he lost his mind after the goo ritual. Matsudo and Ario found him, and Matsudo used all of the techniques at his disposal in order to basically fix Agito's brain. Um, now... With Kiryu, I find it very likely that something similar to that happened. Because let me tell you, that guy... That guy was losing it a little too hard to be... To, to just go to, like, a psychiatrist or something, alright? He needs some anime therapy. And I feel like probably the best choice for that would be Matsudo or the Kure or Wu Clan. Uh, it could be either of those guys. I think those are, like, the most likely candidates out of who we know now. Or you could have another party that we don't know about yet that could be introduced. So, 
Uh, that's very interesting. I'm hoping this means we're going to see Kiryu fight at some point in Omega. Kiryu's another guy where, I mean, Rakshasa's palm and blink are so cool that even if the fight is just kind of okay, you're bound to have some kind of spectacle in it. Um, I, yeah, will we get a rematch with Oma? Probably not. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see Kiryu fight someone pretty good. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And I'm very excited to see what he's going to be talking to Ryuki about here. So that'll be very interesting. And goddamn, this is the longest chapter we've gotten in a while. It's 26 pages, um, which is pretty crazy. The chapters earlier on in Omega were much longer than they are now. Um, probably a factor in that is just having a lot more dialogue and stuff. But like just the chapters feel like they take way longer to get through back then. Um, and this is the longest chapter we've had in a while, probably because of all of the significant stuff that happens in it. I mean, like, we get it. explanations for stuff going on with the Wu Clan, and how other people can learn removal. We have Agito using Dragon Shot again and winning his round, and then we have Kiryu coming back. So, it kind of makes sense that it would be so long. Um, but, yeah. So that's why this is the longest Kengen video I've done, I think. Um, now, since this round is over, who the fuck do I think is going to go next? Well, I think Purgatory needs to stop jobbing, because even though they've had several characters, Toa, Naidan, and now Lu Tien, who are all very strong, the issue is that they come to fucking lose, basically, to show off how strong the other characters are. Actually, no, Naidan didn't job, Naidan killed himself. Naidan, mental health monk bot. His strategy is to just come out onto the arena and blow his fucking brains out as soon as the round starts. But with Toa and Lutian, you have basically S-tier fighters who show up to get fucking beaten to show off how much stronger the other S-tier characters that we already know have become. How much stronger they've gotten since the last series. Um, so we need Purgatory Fighter to show up and beat someone's ass and win. Now, who do I think that could be? Well, for starters, I think it's easiest, since we're familiar with them, to pick which of the Kengen fighters is going to go next. And out of them all, I'm thinking it's going to be one of the lower tier guys. We've got Okubo, uh, Nitoku, and Megara. Not Megara, Masaki. Hayami. One of those three, I think, will probably go next. Or Akoya. Akoya is lower tier. I could see Akoya going next. Um, so, out of those three, we maybe want to see a new character. Um, we maybe want to save uh, Hayami for later. So I'm just going to randomly pick Nitoku. And out of all of the Kengen fighters left to fight, Nitoku... Um, do we want another mirror match? Maybe. If we do, we'll probably have him fight Jirota, assuming Jirota's not the Tiger's vessel, and that he performs Judo, because they're both, like, grappling styles. Or if you, you could have him fight Hayami. Um, Hayami could totally go next. Whatever. It's gonna be one of those four, I think, probably either Nitoku or Hayami, or the most likely. And to go against those two, I'm thinking... Either... Well, now that we know that the Wu and Kurei clans don't actually have a rivalry, I'm thinking Alan and Ryan don't have to fight each other. Um, so I could totally see Alan fighting Hayami. And if Jirota is not the Tiger's Vessel, I can see him fighting Nitoku. Um, so very soft predictions. I didn't fucking expect Akito to go up in round six. So, I mean, it could literally be fucking anyone. Um, so we'll just have to see what happens. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kink and Omega chapter reviews every week. If you enjoy other series such as Record of Ragnarok, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Chainsaw Man, I do videos on those series as well, so if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing Kang and Omega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to it on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around.